Hey buddies, it's Puggy here coming at you in another video. Today we're going to be actually talking about Elden Ring and which class would be actually best for you. We're going to discuss each and every single class and what they start with and what starting stats allow them to start with different strengths that might be more favorable to your style. Now this is a very hard game so don't be afraid to just restart your run to use another class that you didn't pick and I'm going to try to give you my suggestion on what class you would pick to have the easiest time if you're not familiar with any of the Soulsborne types. Type game. But before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch in the top right. You have no idea how much helps me out, and let's get into it. Legendary? Whoa! Whoa. No way! First things first, let's talk about the hero class. Now the hero class is mostly bare bones class. Like a lot of the classes have bows or like spells or something in particular that makes them stand out over anybody else. The only thing that makes the hero, in my opinion, stand out, I could be wrong, is the strength stat that you actually start off, which is very high. It's the highest strength stat that you can start with. So if you're looking for a strength based build, you definitely want to try the hero. The hero starts with some decent armor, allows you to do some light rolls. You won't be fat rolling, which is a term that basically means that you roll when you have a ton of armor on and it's very slow and it doesn't allow you to have a lot of mobility. So this class does start with some decent mobility and it starts with a, an axe and a shield. The shield is very useful for players who are just getting into the game because you can block some damage and the axe does decent damage as well. Right off the bat, I do want to encourage the use of shields for newcomers, but try to eventually unequip the shield on every single character and try your best at dodging. The quicker you learn dodging and mobility is going to be the better because a lot of the attacks in the game you're gonna want to dodge as opposed to block so try not to use your shield as a clutch 100% of the time so try to get a little bit comfortable without the shield let's carry on speaking of shield which most of them actually have <laughs> now that I think about it we start with the bandit now the bandit is a class that actually starts with a decent amount of arcane and dexterity this is the class that you want to pick if you want to have some type of range attack as well because he starts off with a bow and arrows which will allow you to attack enemies from afar just like other soul born games arrows aren't really that powerful but they are a useful tool to poke enemies from afar in case you need to do that the cool thing about the arcane stat is that it allows you to have a higher chance of discovery so you might have a higher chance of finding items and such like that as you go through your adventure in elder ring which is a very nice tool to have especially on your first playthrough and he starts with a nice dagger which allows you to to quickly slice into enemies. So if you want a character that is able to do mid-range combat to short-range combat very easily and able to be very nimble and go across the field and dodge most attacks, I'd probably recommend the bandit, but the shield could be a little bit better. Next class is gonna be the astrologer. Now the astrologer is your classic mage. For the most part, it has two spells that it starts with, which are a nice little long range basic arcane vault that you normally get in most beginnings of mage playthroughs when you're playing Dark Souls like games, but it's called Glintstone Pebble. It's just a generic magical projectile. It has a very slow homing abilities from what I can see. And as well as that, you also get an ability called Glintstone Arc, which allows you to hit multiple enemies in a decent AOE in front of you. Personally, I don't think the arc is too, too great. I feel like the Glintstone Pebble's better overall, but it is nice to have an AOE tool in case you see a lot of enemies. Since he starts with a lot of intelligence, he's obviously very good at magic, but you also start with a short sword, which then allows you to get up close and personal if needed to my favorite thing in most of the games is to do magic and short range at the same time so a nice sword and able to deal decent damage with spells being able to deal decent damage with spells and a decent sword as well is a great starting choice if you're looking for an easy way to play the game because most of the time in souls board game at least from my experience mages and long range spells have usually been the easy mode so if you want an easier time i probably recommend the astrologer but you also start off with a pretty crappy shield but it's better than nothing it doesn't block all damage but it is something just in case you need to block but definitely try to get into the hang of dodging <laughs> next we're going to talk about the prophet now the prophet is basically the pyromancer of elden rings if you guys aren't aware in dark souls you would often be able to pick the pyromancer class which allows you to fling fireballs but you don't get to fling fireballs right off the bat this does start with a pretty close range fire spell but it is still able to deal decent amounts of damage. He does start off with a lot of faith, so if you're looking for a faith based build, definitely try this out. And he also comes with a healing spell, which allows you to save some of your, your SS class for in-game battles, because honestly, heal 
does have a longer cast time than just drinking out of the sippy cup. Definitely use the heal when you can to save your charges off your potion. He also starts with a javelin, which is pretty nice. Being able to poke enemies from a decent mid range is also very useful. Generally all around great class. Once again, similar to the astrologer, probably recommend this one because you have a good mix of most of everything. You got spells, mid range spears, and an okay shield. So you can definitely have an easier time when you first get into the game. Next class is going to be the warrior. Now the warrior starts with a very high dexterity. So if you're looking for a dex based melee build definitely pick the warrior because we get two nice scimitars allows you to attack very rapidly and you get a pretty cool spin attack as well that allows you to deal decent damage granted his special attack could be better other classes do start with better special attacks but it is nice to have in case you need it he's a lot more nimble than the other melee class that we're going to talk about next and he also starts with a decent shield which allows you to have at least a form of protection from your attacks of course it doesn't block everything but it is still very nice to have and it doesn't weigh a lot you'll always be fast rolling which is always excellent to see next class is going to be the vagabound which is more of your classic warrior tank sort of thing i wouldn't necessarily say there's any tanks in the game but if you're looking for a character that has a decent amount of hp and really heavy armor this is the class you want to start with this class starts with a very awesome shield that i believe has 100 protection from melee attacks so you wouldn't take any damage when you're blocking with it which is a great trade-off he starts with a halberd which allows you to do some horseback attacks very easily so if you want to start off with mounted combat you could use the halberd as a way to transition to that very easily otherwise you have a long sword that allows you to deal decent damage it has a decent range and it allows you to remain mobile during combat it's pretty standard it's well balanced pretty decent starting weapon for most players honestly keep in mind that with everything that you get at the start you will be fat rolling so i would recommend getting rid of some pieces of armor or even just unequipping the halberd if you want to have your protection still once again i can't stress this enough make sure you're not fat rolling the longer you're fat rolling, the longer you're in danger because you're not able to have more invulnerability frames. So definitely make sure <laughs> you're fast rolling. Next class is going to be the prisoner. Now the prisoner is a pretty interesting class. He's actually more of a perfect mix of melee and magic than I said with the astrologer. He starts with a rapier, which allows you to do thrust motions with your sword, which allows you to poke the enemies at mid range a little bit better, sort of like the prophet with his spear, but not quite as long. He has a very interesting spell that doesn't cast immediately instead it hovers in the air and then after i believe three to four seconds it throws it to the, towards the enemy with dealing decent damage personally i feel like the spell is a great trade-off compared to the astrologer the prisoner is a great mix of spell and melee if you're looking for that next is going to be the confessor now the confessor is a very interesting character when you first look at it he looks more like a priest than anything he has high faith not as high as the prophet he still comes with a finger seal which is a sacred seal which allows you to then cast healing spells just like the prophet he comes with a healing spell so you wouldn't get rid of charges of your s's flask and he also comes with this interesting ability assassin's approach which allows you to not get noticed as quickly as others which allow you to backstab pretty easily he comes with a decent shield and once again a decent sword if you want more of a face-based build but allows you to have a nice assassin's approach at the same time this is a great mix for you next is going to be the wrench now most people look at the wrench and say it's probably a bad choice to pick now if you're a first time player i probably wouldn't pick the wrench but the wrench does come at level one and pretty high base stats so you can kind of mold your character to be whatever it wants it's really just a blank slate the wrenches it only starts with a little club and just general base great stats so if you're looking for a class that starts off with a tiny bit more of a challenge but you're not sure how you want to build your character having a blank slate as wrench is pretty nice but i probably wouldn't recommend that as your first character <laughs> and then finally the a samurai now the samurai is honestly the coolest because who doesn't like a cool samurai he has a katana which has a great ability that allows you to unseat the sword real quick dealing high melee damage and also comes with a decent shield as well he and the bandit are the only two that comes with a bow actually Actually, and he also comes with a different type of arrow which are fire arrows which allow you to deal a little bit more damage than regular arrows so this class does come with a decent shield decent armor decent melee as well as a long range tech option with the bow which is very nice he's a kind of he's honestly a really great mix i gotta say he's decently mimble he has high dexterity if you're looking for a dex based character but you also want a great off choice with the bows and decent armor definitely pick up the samurai he is a great choice now keep in mind these classes don't 
won't necessarily force you to play a certain playstyle. You can always mix and match. So as you go through the Elden Ring, you could eventually make your bandit into more of a mage, or you could even make your Vegabond more into a faith-based class. It's all how you want to build them. You also have the opportunity to reset your stats if you ever so need it later in the game as well. So don't feel like if you don't like your class, you're stuck with it. And I hope this guide was helpful at all for you guys. And I hope this guide helps you into your journey into Elden Ring. Keep in mind, if this is your first, it is a pretty steep learning curve. Don't give up. You can definitely do it. It is a very, very fun game. Just keep at it, guys. And as always, a big shout out to the members who make these videos possible. We have Jace Noodles, Clairvoyant, 31 Bar 70, and Rick Iglesias. These are the people who support me as little as $5 a month. And you can also support me as little as $5 a month by clicking the link in the comments or description or on the top right. The more members we have, the closer I get to becoming full time, which means more videos for you guys. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day. <laughs> Bye-bye. And the last shall be First to immerse in a pass out heat Facing him up with a moxie melt Till he woke up drowning in tchotchke hell War in a cave with a torch on a wall Then a window arrangement of porcelain dolls